One of those guys working very hard, a meteorologist Eric Fisher. He's live in Rhode Island. Hello to you, Eric. How are you holding up there? Hey there, Chris. A good afternoon, everybody. You know, we've been talking about the storm surge is one of the main impacts here in coastal Rhode Island. I want to show you a postcard right now. This is what, something that was handed to me a few minutes ago. This was shot back in 1981. I want you to really focus on that picture, soak up some of the details, notice the White House there, and how much beach is out in front of that house in the parking lot off to the side. You got it? I think you got it. Good. Now let's widen out a little bit. That house is that house. But that house in 1981 was over there. You see a little pipe sticking out of the ground. That pipe was attached to the house where it was in that postcard. That's how much the landscape has changed here over the last 30 years due to some of these storms. I mean, you're talking 100 feet of difference from where that house was back in 1981 and the water last night was running underneath that same house. So that's how nature can just change whether you like it or not. And last night, certainly the type of change that they did not want to see. Uh, you're talking about surge that came in. It cut into the side here, right into the bank, leading up to some of the homes. Where I'm standing was someone's lawn just yesterday morning. You can see the grass standing right next to me. That extended out another 20 feet or so, and then you had the beach. Now, so you have such a huge impact. Three homes were washed into the ocean here. There's some debris up on a on top that was washed in a couple hundred yards inland. There's a cornfield about 600 yards out inland, and that had water in it last night. Uh, so it's just amazing when you look at the power and how it can change things here along the coast. Uh, losing three houses, but fortunately not losing any lives here in Rhode Island. Of course, that's the headline we're always looking for. We know that other states weren't so lucky during Sandy, and we're not over. We know there's still quite a ways to go. Chris, back to you. Eric, real quick, just to, to be clear here, that White House you were talking about, was that moved before Sandy? Did you hear that? I cut out again. Eric, well, I'll try one more time. The White House, just to be clear, was that house moved before Sandy, or did Sandy push that house back? That was moved back in 2005. Uh, so back in 2005, it was still out there. It's only seven years ago. That's not a lot of change. And then as we came into uh, uh, Sandy, obviously, it was still not far enough back, although it wasn't completely damaged in a way that you can't repair. Any water that came in, they can fix that up. They actually have been talking here in this neighborhood about moving the front first two rows of houses back. That's something that happens a lot on the coastline. They'll just say, the erosion has moved in. The storms have changed our landscape. We've got to take our houses, get them to a safer spot. Obviously, it didn't happen in time. And Eric, as you're talking to us, we do have on one of our graphics machines, we're looking at where that house was on Google Images, and we're looking at it from above. So you just showed us the picture from the beach level, and we have Adam Deaton circling it so our viewers can see what we're talking about there. And it was really, it was alone by itself, away from all the other houses. And now what we're looking at, and you can see earlier this year, the Google pictures, Eric, we're looking at. And you're saying that they're talking about taking a whole row of those houses and moving them back? Yeah, you just pick them up and move them. And actually, I don't know if you can see, way down the beach, there's that huge cottage. They call them cottages down here. Pretty nice cottage. <laughs> all the way down the stretch. They actually had, a few years back, taken a couple pieces of that house, taken them apart, and moved that house back 100 feet as well. Uh, Rhode Island coastline has changed so much. You get hurricanes, tropical systems, nor'easters. Sometimes you just have a wind event with high pressure, uh, and it can take the sand and move it somewhere else. So you've got this beautiful scenery, and in five to ten years, you've got something completely different. All right, also, I have to ask you one more about the houses, Eric. Some of the houses doesn't look like there's any room to move them back. Is there room to actually move the houses, or are they just going to put them next to other houses? <laughs> well, they wouldn't be moving back just, uh, you know, 20 feet up toward the next house here, you're waving hello to your neighbor in the shower. Uh, there's a cornfield that's on the other end of the neighborhood, so if you took the first two rows, you'd probably have to move them all the way back there. So different people would have the oceanfront views now. So it's essentially, you would no longer have your ocean view. You'd have to move your house, and someone else would now be on the ocean, essentially, is what's going on. Yeah, and for a lot of these houses, they own the house, but they don't own the land. We actually talked to the family that owns the land here. This is Carpenter Beach, one of the Carpenter family, and they say it's tough. Uh, you try to manage these things. A lot of the people lived here 40, 50 years. There's zoning laws. If a house falls into the ocean, can you rebuild it? Can you move it? 
Uh, sometimes there are some laws where if 51% of the house is moved, that's okay. But if you have 49% of the house, you can't move it or you can't rebuild it. It's, it's like out on Cape Cod, if anyone's been there. They have these camps out on places like Nosset Beach. Houses that have been there forever, but the storms come in, they change everything. Once the houses are gone, you can't rebuild them. Uh, out in Truro in uh, Cape Cod, same type of story. So it's kind of life by the sea. You enjoy the good times. When it gets bad, it can get pretty bad. And Eric, what's next there? We know we have a high tide coming up. Is there any concern about that? And if not, what's next for the people there? Uh, the next high tide cycle comes in around 9 o'clock tonight. This morning, it was still very high. When we were over in Narragansett, it was still coming up over the seawall with some of the bigger waves. Tonight, we could see some minor to perhaps moderate coastal flooding. Uh, it won't be anything like what we saw last night. And with the damage that's been done and the erosion that's taken place, you're not going to see a huge impact on top of that. Uh, I suppose that's some good news, but it will be much higher than average. A meteorologist Eric Fisher reporting for us live in Rhode Island, where the coastline once again has been forever changed.